this particular article, he talks about reasons authors don't submit their work and my responses, meaning Richard Thomas. He is an accomplished author. He also um, <clears throat> teaches online classes, but uh, college classes as well about writing. Um, so he's one of those uh, rare creatures that has both been successful as a writer and teaches it as well. So um, I've always enjoyed his articles. He's very insightful, very in-depth, and very knowledgeable. And of course, the, um, the information is, is practical. I was talking to the students in one of my classes, Richard saying, the other day, and the topic of submissions came up. We had a long chat about stories, the process, and the dread. That prompted me to ask them why they didn't send out their stories, what was stopping them, what stood in their way. Here are the answers and my responses, which will hopefully encourage them and you, dear reader, to send out your work. How are you going to be discovered if nobody reads your amazing new story? Here is my advice. Hope it helps. I don't know when it's done. I'm having a hard time finishing the story. I'm a perfectionist. All right, Richard says, I hear you. It is difficult. I wrote a column on knowing when your story is done, but let's expand on that. That's a very good column too, so that's worth checking out. Uh, the best way to finish a story is to start it, to work on it, edit it, applying all the advice you get in workshops or from peers, and then leave it alone. Perfection is the enemy of the good. We've all heard that, but I think it's especially true in writing. Uh, let me tell you a secret. It will never be perfect. What's more important is that is that it's personal. It has emotion. It resonates. It moves readers. You know all about Freytag. Uh, again, fray tag is like rising and falling action. So it's a, um, it's sort of the the model of of climax and then coming to an end. I've talked about that a lot, so I know you've already gone over that. Listen to your peers, listen to your professors, and then keep editing until you don't know what else to do with it. You should start out with a chainsaw and then an axe and then a chef's knife and then a scalpel. I guess meaning you you lop off the worst pieces of the story first and then work your way down to fine tuning. The last round of edits should be word choices, commas, little things, adding a sensory detail, changing a word from ed to ing for flow, and that kind of stuff. When you've done everything you can, put it aside. Let it sit a day, a week if you can, then come back and read it one last time. Not as an author or editor, but as a reader. If it works, if it moves you, then call it done and send it out. I've written 6,000 word stories in one day, concept writing, editing, last read sent. I was on a deadline, of course. You can do this, Richard says. Don't be precious, it's a story. If it's hard, did it scare or unsettle you? If it's fantasy, did it take you to a new world and show you wonder and originality? If it's paranoid thriller, did it get your heart racing? If you said yes, then you're done. You will keep evolving as an author, remember that. When I look back on earlier work in my career, I cringe sometimes. It's okay. Of course, you've, you're going to get better, but don't let that stop you from publishing your best work today. I think that's very good advice on his part. Uh, I do think that they, there is a issue of over-editing. Of course, there's an issue of under-editing where people don't really um, put in the time to, to make those kind of changes. But uh, there are people who take it too far where you reach a certain point where I don't think you're ever making the story better. You're just making it different. And um, that's that's the time to kind of let it go and move on. Uh, it's, and some of this is is uh, insubstantial in the sense that like it's a choice of one way or the other. One is probably better, but it's hard to tell which, which way is the best on certain things in a story. And I like how he said, don't be too precious. You know, this idea of like, you're being so very careful with this story when you could have written three or four or five others and one or two of those stories would be quite excellent. Uh, but you can't get there if you don't keep writing. And just the act of continuing to write um, teaches you things that working on one story forever won't teach you. I have a fear of rejection. Now here's Richard Thomas's uh, response to that. Yeah, it's tough, but it's the nature of the beast. Do you not cook because you're afraid of splattering hot oil? Do you not ride a bike because you're afraid of crashing? Do you not enter a new relationship out of fear of a broken heart? I guess some people don't. Of course not. <laughs> do You do all these things because that's life, right? Live it. Rejection is part of the process. I know it hurts. I know it sucks. I've been rejected more than 900 times in the last 12 years. I've been rejected by friends, rejected in an hour, 
had my prose called purple by reviewers, had stories that were rejected 20, 40, and 100 times before landing with a great publication. You must develop thick skin. ABC, always be closing. It's a numbers game. Hey, Clever, welcome on board, man. We'll talk more about acceptance rates later, but if you have to submit X number of times before you get accepted, then send it out. Whether the number is 10, 20, or 50, send it out. You will get rejected. Deal with it. What's the alternative? Just don't submit, don't polish? Well, then why are you writing? Come on, you can do this, Richard says. I know that deep down you know you have talent. You know the, that story is good. Maybe it's even great. Believe in your work because if you don't, nobody else will. I don't, I've never had a story rejected 50 times. I, I thought I have a few stories that are maybe seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times, and I thought that was a lot. Um, part of it is I keep writing stories, so I, I constantly have new ones um, that I'm putting out there and trying to find homes for. Um, so I, I, one thing, I, I'm not afraid of rejection, but I guess in the sense of this, uh, maybe I should be submitting those rejected stories more often, even if I don't think they're perfect. The next one he talks about is I have a fear of acceptance. Now, of course, this one's going to seem kind of odd to people because uh, winning something, uh, getting accepted, seems like something to not be afraid of. But let's see what Richard has to say about that. This one comes right after the other. And I want to say it's silly, but I know this feeling too. All of the questions we're answering today are things that have blocked me as well. But this is one that you really need to not worry about. So get in and then what? <clears throat> Fear of not being able to repeat the caliber of work? Of course you can. If you've done it once, you can do it again. Trust me. I fear that I have days. The fear I have these days is that I worry about getting in and then and then I do and then announce the TOC and think, oh, wow, look at all these amazing authors. Please don't let my story be the worst one in the magazine or anthology. LOL. True. I think that. And you know what? I've even had reviewers say on Amazon and Goodreads, here are my favorite stories and here are ones I didn't like and mine was on the shit list. Hurts, I know. I've had mine down there too. But I've also been a story that stood out. You won't please everyone. Write the story anyway. Submit the story anyway. Do not fear success. You deserve it. All right, that's a good one. Uh, probably that's not people's biggest fear is fear of acceptance. Acceptance rates are low, so why even bother? Yeah, I know. I hear you. It's true. But you know what? I've broken into markets against the odds. The places had an acceptance rate of 5% or 1% or half a percent point, you can too. If you start with the top publications, yes, it's going to be a long, painful journey, most likely. But take a shot. You never know. The first time I broke into Cemetery Dance, I was shocked. I've been rejected by Cemetery Dance a couple times. The second time, even more so. Do you know the odds of getting into Best Horror of the Year? I've been in Best Horror of the Year one time. Um, I hate to even consider it. One in several thousand, and yet I got in. I laugh about it all now, but back in the day, I used it used to crush me. Of course, The Dark, he's talking about the magazine The Dark, rejected me in 24 hours for the 12th time. Of course, Shimmer hates me. that He rejects me 16 times now. 16 times now. <clears throat> and they went under. Of course, Nightmare, another magazine, said no again. At least they were fast. Just to give you an idea, here are some of the rejection totals that I've had to top publications. Apex, which is very high paying and rejects me all the time. Apex rejected Richard 13 times, Black Static 5. Now these are top uh, magazines. I've been rejected by them too, never accepted. Clark's World 15, they have a high rejection rate. The Dark 15, um, none longer than a week, most one to three days before he was rejected. Uh, Lamplight, he was rejected five times. Lightspeed four times. Uh, Fantasy and sci-fi four times. Oh, you got a my rejection. Congratulations. Um, I've been rejected by all these magazines. Seven rejections for Nightmare. Shimmer, I don't know if I've... Uh, I don't think I've submitted to them, but I bet I have. <clears throat> Sixteen rejections. Dead market now. Shock Totem, I've been rejected by a bunch of times. He's been rejected 13 times. Strange Horizons, five rejections. I don't think I've... I may have submitted to them before. Fastarian, I've not submitted to is four times. Weird Tales, three times. Weird Tales, I've just never submitted to because I don't expect to get in. And I guess that's kind of what he's getting at here. Jay Wilburn should be submitting to, to more of these magazines to be rejected more. Every one of those stories went on to get published in other markets, mostly at pro rates. But I will never stop submitting to my white whales. Why? 
because I want to get in. When you've exhausted the top markets, work your way down the list. You will find more accepting publications and eventually the story will get published. I did make a goal this year of submitting more stories um, uh, and I've submitted a few. I've had like seven or eight that I've submitted and have gotten one acceptance so far and um, so a few are still under consideration. But uh, I, I guess I need to be pushing more. I got tons of stories, so I might as well get them out there, right? Um, I'm not sure where to send my work is the next excuse he talks about. And Richard's response is, well, the easy answer is then do the research. That's what I did. That's what every author does. I have an ongoing list of where to send your stories. So uh, he has that in here. Um, so this is a good, just as the links he has in here is a good resource. Let me pop that into chat real quick. So you guys can check that out if you want to. Um, he, so he keeps a list of stories. You can start there. I also include, it also includes every publication credit I've ever gotten. I use duotrope.com. They're pretty good. I think you have to pay for those though. List there, favorite markets, save searches, etc. Do that. Join the open call groups on Facebook. There are quite a few. Look at the publications and presses that are nominated for major awards that win that win those awards. Look at the table of contents of Best Horror of the Year Anthology and others. I have quite a few Storyville columns that talk about how to submit using Duotrope, what the awards and the Best of the Year anthologies can teach you, etc. Peruse them. They will help, but saying you don't know where to send your work just means you haven't spent the time to figure it out. Do the work. How many pro horror markets are there on Duotrope right now? 25. How many if you add in semi-pro 76 so there you go all right next section is i'm not sure what genre my story is all right okay here okay i hear you richard says but i mean figure it out lol there are only so many main genres and at a place like duotrope they have 11 listed any general action adventure erotica fantasy horror mystery crime romance science fiction suspense thriller Western, there you go. There are a lot of other genres too, uh, and subgenres. Your story will fit into one of those categories. If you aren't sure what the genre is, then look it up. I mean, there is a wide range of horror out there supernatural, quiet, splatter punk, gothic, Lovecraftian, realism, body horror, psychological, etc. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's just horror. You say your story is more like dark fantasy with some horrific elements, it's still horror. It's a transgressive story, pretty weird, still horror. <laughs> it's in space and there are aliens, it's still horror. If it's unsettling, if it scares you, if it's disturbing, it probably fits under the horror umbrella. That's a little broad, I think. Also, most markets that are open to horror are also open to fantasy and science fiction. Apex, uh, a FHS, fantasy horror, and, and uh, suspense, I guess? What's the uh, science fiction, sorry. The dark, uh, fantasy and horror. Strange Horizons, fantasy, horror, science fiction. Some are only open to fantasy and science fiction and not horror, so do your research. People forget that Cemetery Dance says right on the cover, the magazine of horror and suspense. Both of my stories were paranoid thrillers, and I didn't think they'd take either of them. They did. Understand your genres. Know that you may write hybrid work. Take a shot. Submit. The worst they can say is no. It is always good to pick a genre. I know that... Um, Authors a lot of times will get cute with the idea of genres, so they'll want to say, well, I don't like to categorize my work. Well, you got to categorize your work because that's how readers find your work. So like to, to back away and say, well, I don't like to say it's horror. It's a psychological thriller. It's this, it's that. So thriller is fine. Crime fiction is fine. Horror is fine. But it you should be able to pick one of those. You should be able to focus in. And you can always market the story in different directions depending on, on where you're putting it. Um, the best way to pitch a story is to tell what's the same about it and what's different. What's the same about it helps readers figure out what they want to read if they want to take a chance on you. And that's usually genre. So what's the same is it's a steampunk story or it's a um, weird uh, western story or it's a uh, it's a splatterpunk story. Whatever you, you, you want to say it is, that broad genre fi uh, category is what's the same. It's not an insult to your story. It's, it's a way to help readers uh, focus in on it. Then what's different is the thing uh, that, that stands out. Um, you know, it's a horror story of uh, vampires versus werewolves versus robots, whatever it is. 
And that's the thing that, that makes it stand out from everything else. So don't be afraid to tell what's the same because those two things, what's the same and what's different, is really what sells your story, I think. All right, the next thing Richard brings up as excuses authors give for not submitting their work. The process is dull, boring, and I hate it. Uh, Richard says, yeah, get in line. In the beginning, when I set up my Duotrope account, I spent hours reading markets, adding them to my favorites, setting up searches, etc. But now when I'm looking to submit, I just pop on over, look up the markets, find ones that are open, submit to the best places out there. You have to spend some time getting set up. Richard says, whether you are searching via Duotrope or Horrortree, Horrortree is free, or the Submission Grinder, Submission Grinder is free. Horrortree and Submission Grinder both have pretty much all the same um, markets that are on Duotrope. Duotrope just costs money. Uh, but really, there are only so many markets. If you're writing literary fiction, yeah, there are hundreds. So it's for sure more painful. But for speculative markets, there are just there just aren't that many places. The next excuse is I don't have something that fits the theme or fits in general. Richard's response to this is, well then, write something new. I mean, if it's a pizza horror story or an anthology of female warriors set on Mars or a reimagine of classic monsters, sure, you may not have it an exact fit. So this is your opportunity to write something new. Do it. Have fun. If you already have s stories written, guarantee, I guarantee they will work with some of the aforementioned markets, no matter how weird or original or hybrid you think your story is. Also, if it comes to broader themes, loss, love, horror, magic, etc., then look at your stories and see if there are any if there is any way that your story can fit. Not sure, take think it's close, submit, take a shot. Like I said, I wasn't sure if battle battle not with monsters or chasing ghosts was a good fit for cemetery dance. But I sent them anyway, and they took them both. And that's Richard Thomas uh, talking. Um, he mentions the pizza horror story. That's um, kind of an ongoing joke in the horror genre because um, Max Booth III with uh, Perpetual Motion Machine uh, put out a call for pizza horror. And they ended up with like thousands of, maybe a thousand uh, submissions. They only took a few, and so all those extra pizza stories, uh, horror pizza stories, were getting submitted to other markets until finally uh, most of the horror markets say no pizza stories. And people who don't know the the history behind, behind that just don't understand why pizza horror in particular is a problem. Uh, but that's, uh, Max Booth uh, laments it, but that's kind of his mark on the, uh, on the legacy of horror is the fact that he made pizza stories taboo. All right, the next thing Richard brings up that uh, some people give as an excuse for not submitting their stories, I don't have the time or money to buy a copy of every magazine out there. And I do think this is a legitimate point. A lot of times these big markets will say, if you want to know what kind of stories we want, um, read what we've already accepted, which makes sense on some level. But again, you can't buy every copy of one market that you're trying to uh, make money on. So it's, it's not really feasible to do that with everybody you want to submit a story to. All right, Richard says, I know, so see what they have online. Go to your local library, use bookstore, peruse the used books on Amazon, see if you can find a at least one copy. If you can't spare $10 to research the market that you really want to get into, then you probably have other priorities that are more pressing. Again, I don't know that... Um, I see what he's getting at here, but I don't think you, you have to spend money by you, I don't think you have to become a customer of them in order to submit to them. Obviously, it helps, but I, I don't think it should be a requirement. Ask your friends on social media if they have extra copies of. Ask your friends on social media if they have extra copies of XYZ that they can send you. Angela, welcome on. And often publishers will be happy to send you a PDF. We do all the time. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even consider that, but you can you can ask to see what they've. Uh, what they've sent it has never crossed my mind to even to even ask um, buy an anthology once a year and read work from across a wide range of publications that's not a bad idea at all you can find a way when I was submitting my literary short stories after I got my MFA did I buy a copy of 100 markets that I submitted to of course not but I had about 20 that I pilfered from the program some I picked up at AWP writers conference and another 20 that I found at my local library for one dollar each be creative and then actually read them that's a good idea Richard says I don't have the time that's uh, that's an excuse and that's probably one that a lot of people use 
Um, none of us have the time. If you care about your writing career, then put in the time. Stop drinking, stop playing video games, stop going out, stop watching movies, stop effing around on social media. Well, some of that can work. You know that you waste time. I do too. Make the time because nobody else is going to do this for you, my man. If you can find the time to write, you can find the time to submit. Once you have markets listed, have a generic cover letter drafted. That's a good idea. And your story is formulated and pub polished up. It shouldn't take you any time at all. You could go submit a story to 10 markets right now, and it would take about 20 minutes. I'd check the guidelines, the word count maximums, use Submittable or their submission portal, or even email, and boom, send them out. Chip away at it. You take 20 minutes a day or put aside one hour a week over coffee this Sunday maybe and have fun. Jesus, it isn't a criminal trial. Enjoy it. It's it's exciting, an opportunity, not a chore. You aren't getting teeth pulled. Okay, that's very, um, that's very uh, cogent advice, I think. The next excuse he gives is the work isn't good enough. I suck. Nobody loves me. They'll never take it. Why even bother? Uh, we all have imposter syndrome, so I'm sure that's what he's going to talk about here. Listen, Eeyore, I know you, how you feel, Richard says. I do, honestly. I feel that way all the time. I have imposter syndrome some days, too, and then next week I'll be king of the world. I do that as well. You need to cut this shit out right now. You can tell I'm getting worked up because I've cursed a few times. LOL. If you honestly don't think the story works, then fix it. I see my first fix it. See my first answer to this column. But honestly, listen to your workshop peers and your teachers. They are not blowing smoke. They aren't kissing your ass. They aren't making this up. If an editor rejects a story but says send me more, they they mean it. If you have take if you have taken one of my classes and I say a story is ready or it's amazing, then I mean it. Uh, if you can't trust yourself yet to analyze your own writing to tell what what's done or good or special then rely on your peers and, and professors but in time you need to be able to do that why is it you can take criticism in class but you can't accept the compliments there's a lot of people like that I think in life you must develop the skills to fix your work but also learn to leave it alone when it's working when people respond to a scene remember what you did read that part again and know that you are doing good things there keep doing it it will take time to write truly amazing fiction, days, weeks, months, probably years. That's okay. First, write a story, a complete story that works, then write a better story, then write an amazing story. You can do it, and that's very good advice. The rejection is demoralizing. I know that feeling. If I told you, Richard says, that you had to bounce a tennis ball ten times to get a cold beer or a hot fudge sundae or a hug, would you stop it for? No. You'd keep bouncing that ball. Do, you do your best work, understand that if a publication rejects 99 out of 100 or 95 out of 100, 100, then of course you're going to get rejected a lot. Understand it's part of the process. Don't take it personally. Keep going. I've rejected work as an editor at Gamute or Dark Horse House Press, Dark House, sorry, because it didn't fit our theme. Even though I loved it, I knew that the author was a big name and it sold the next week to Clark's World or somewhere. <clears throat> I rejected lots of great camera stories for ex exigencies because I had already taken two camera stories. We get rejected for a number of reasons, but rarely because the work is terrible. Bad fit, too long, too short, not a theme that editor likes, not a style that works for the editor, a concept that's been done a lot. So many reasons, and the next editor may just say yes. The rejections are demoralizing only if you let them de be demoralizing. They they are just a means to an end to keep going. Now, I've had that happen, too. Uh, there have been stories I had accepted that I couldn't figure out what the um, what the editor saw in it because I didn't think it was my best work. And over the years, as I've gotten to know editors uh, and then kind of figure out things that they like, um, sometimes I figured out, oh, they picked that story because they have the, a preference for this idea or that kind of thing. So it's these intangible things sometimes that just resonate with certain editors uh, that um, wouldn't for somebody else. The no simultaneous submissions policies are killing me. Richard says, yeah, I hear you. There are a few approaches here. No simultaneous submissions means that when you submit a story to one publication, if they have this policy, you're not supposed to submit it anywhere else until you hear back from them. I don't have a particular problem with that, but I have a ton of stories 
So when I submit something, I just kind of forget about it and move on until um, I hear back or, you know, they never answer and I move on. Uh, yeah, I hear you, Richard says. There are a few approaches here. One, you could just ignore them, but I didn't tell you that. If you are still evolving and it's a long shot to get in, screw it. Send your story far and wide. But editors do talk. You can get blackballed. Early in my career, I ignored the no simultaneous submissions policy and then got a story to two markets on the same day. Oops. I had to lie to one publication when I pulled the story saying I didn't see their NSS policy and I apologized. I stopped doing that. So plan B, luckily most of the elite markets that do ha still have an NSS policy, which I do hate by the way, are relatively fast. So just the just honor the policy and send your work out. Um, here is how I usually do it. Plan A, submit to elite fast NSS markets one at a time. Apex, Clark's World, The Dark, Fantasy, Fantasy and Science Fiction, Nightmare, Strange Horizons, Fasterinia, and a few semi like Black Static. For these, I usually start with the fastest. The Dark, two days. Clark's World, four days. Uh, Fantasy and Science Fiction, three days. I do get rejected fast by those places. And then work my way out. This may might take you a few weeks or a few months. Plan B, hit the markets that are open to si simultaneous. Pro first, Agur, uh, flame tree, pseudopod, and then some semi second, lamplight, pulp, literature, etc. Because my dream markets are no, no simultaneous submissions, I'd start there over the plan B markets. The other thing you can do, especially if you're taking a workshop where you may be writing several stories in a short period of time, is finish a few of them and send them all out to this at the same time. So, Fever Dream goes to the dark, Lost in the Forest goes to Nightmare and Dead End Job goes to fantasy and science fiction, rinse and repeat. When I came out of my MFA program, I had seven stories out over 100 markets, mostly literary journals at the time, at the same time. I can help you, I can help it, no, I'm sorry, this can help if you're obsessively checking your email for responses. I don't do that, I just try to keep track and leave it alone. Knowing that I have a few stories out in the world helps calm me down. I feel like I'm doing something and not just screwing around. And while those stories are bouncing around, write new ones or maybe that novel. Definitely keep writing. All right. Richard concludes here. I know it's hard. I know it's exhausting. You act like I haven't cried getting a particularly painful rejection or a particularly surprising acceptance. I've been there. But the one thing I do want to hear from my students or my peers or any of you authors out there busting your asses to get the work done is that you're not submitting what he doesn't want to hear is that you're not submitting your work it kills me I'm lucky that I've had so many talented students in my classes if I said your story is great special amazing horrifying inspiring powerful or something else that's a glowing review then look at my edits and then send it out please write it edit it workshop it edit again get that f last feedback give it one last read and then submit your work push it out of the nest set it free there are people out there that need to read your work they are suffering and you are the light they are lonely and you are the friend in the dark they are numb and they need you to be unsettling need you to be unsettled and woken up do it believe in it best of luck and when you do break into those markets please come back here and tell me it'll make my day